What's going on, Hollywire? I am Lance Bass. And I'm Aaron Kunkel. Check out our boy band con film. Hollywire, what's going on? We got Aaron and Lance Bass here in South by Southwest. Uh -huh. How are you? And they just premiered their film. <laughs> yes, the Boy Con. That's awesome. Yes, it was so much fun. You know, we've been working on this for a very long time. So to see it in a huge theater with an audience and to hear the reactions we were hoping to hear, we feel good now. Yes. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a dream come true. Bring it back to like when you guys put the, the group together. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was kismet really. Um, uh, Chris Kirkpatrick had the idea of starting a band. You know, there was no such thing as a boy band back then. That wasn't a word yet. So uh, he just wanted to create a group like Boys to Men. You know, he was obsessed with Boys to Men, just like all of us were. And so he wanted to put together an R&B like vocal group. And so he called Justin and uh, said, you want to start a band? And Justin said, well, I'm working with JC right now in the studio. Can he join our band? Sure. <laughs> They're out at Pleasure Island on the dance floor. They see Joey Fatone. JC's like, hey, I went to school with him. He's like, good dancer. You want to be in the band? Sure. And then uh, they needed a bass singer. So Justin called his vocal coach. He's like, hey, do you know any bass singers? He's like, yeah, there's a guy Lance, but his mom won't ever let him do it. And uh, so we went down to Orlando, sang the Star Spangled Banner. And then we all looked at each other and said, holy crap, this is... Uh, this is something special. Wow. Yeah. Mm. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay, so we always have a thing on, our, on, we have a spinning wheel in our studio and we have NSYNC or One Direction. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is the greatest boy band of all time between the two? The great, I mean, we're just so different. <laughs> I know, but there's like, there are the fans. Uh, we gotta still bring the fans back into their war here. Yeah, they well, I mean, I guess it depends. I mean, the fans, who, who knows what they think? Uh, I don't know, I guess you'll just have to compare Different. There should be a show where you can like put Christina versus Britney. Yes. And you like go to different subjects. It's like, okay, now vocal, now dance, you know, and uh, and then really get down to like who was the greatest. Yeah, you did, need to work on that. Did you, uh, we're, it's going to be in the show. It's going to be. We have a whole wheel thing for that. Uh, uh, you've hung out with Britney probably many times when yeah. you were. What was what's, what was it like working with Britney in her earlier years and, and being around her? You know, Britney was like our sister. Right. Um, you know, we we started with her. Um, you know, she was on the Mickey Mouse Club, of course, with Justin and JC. And uh, Justin's mom started a group called Innocence. And so she was the, one of the first members of that group. Uh, but then the label wouldn't let her do it because they wanted her to try a solo career. And uh, she tried it and it worked. <laughs> I remember um, when she just got her first record deal and she recorded Baby One More Time and she gave it to me on, a, I think, a cassette tape. And uh, I listened to it and I'm like, that's a good song, you know? Cassette tape. And then uh, I listened to it again and I'm like, this is a really good song. And I listened to it about 20 times in a row. I'm like, this is a hit, huge hit. And it was so crazy how it was a slow burn, um, you know, that she released it and it was not a hit at all. It took months for that thing. Uh, to really blow up and she was on tour with us at the time and I remember the first half of the tour she would get booed off stage the the girls did not want her on stage because of her relationship with Justin that was the rumor um, but then halfway through the tour she was a superstar people were just loving her he tell you all the stories before, before back in there. Yeah, he knows I mean, so many details you know, so many all things about boy bands that I never thought I would know uh, before this movie. <laughs> it's been great though. I mean, it's 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 awesome to hear how everything came together and how these guys like. I think the best part is that they all just became brothers. Uh -huh. Like you know, they were each other's best friends. You know, and that's that it. That's exactly what you want out of people to make art with. Okay, so let's talk about Lou Pearlman. That's pretty wild. I mean, I of course I've known about it all, but now it's really coming out in the stock. What, what was it, what, what was it about the guy that just made him do this and do all the bad stuff and also kind of he was able to market you guys in this huge way too though i don't know if he was a mad genius or just very lucky right <laughs> um but he did give us our start he was the first investor in us um and you know the silver lining in the whole story is we we wouldn't have been able to jumpstart our career that quickly without a lou perlman behind us right yeah. Yeah, he just ended up taking it in a lot of different ways, you know? He, he, you can't take away that he started two of the biggest bands ever. Plus, he's got LFO, O-Town, like C-Note, so many other bands after even these guys. Uh, so you can't take away, he changed music in the 90s. So it's just, it's, it's crazy where else the story went. This documentary starts with that and covers all the, the boy band stuff, but it goes so many other places because Lose, lose arms stretched wide. Uh, stretched wide, yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, awesome hanging out All with right. you guys. Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you, you so much everybody. for the boy band Thank chat, the boy of band course, talk. Of
Thank you.